I think it was called Dixie Electric Company back in the day in Columbus. And my wife and I were regulars there and this big pudgy kid comes up to me one night and he figures out I'm a lifter and he starts asking me questions and, uh, well, where do you train? What do you do? And he, he says, uh, I do dumbbell curls with 60 pound dumbbells till my arms get black and blue. And I said, well, that's just stupid. <laughs> he, said, he literally, I remember this like yesterday. Yeah. And it was in 77 or 78. Um, and he just kept bugging me at these, he'd see me and see me and bug me and bug me. I go to Lou, pretty much the way Jim came to Lou with me, yeah. except this is a whole different deal. <laughs> I said, you might think I'm crazy, but this is like a, a big farm boy that looks like he could be massively strong. I just said, he's a little bit crazy. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> so obviously, Louis, Louis agreed to bring him in, and you know the rest of that. Yeah. Um, it turned out there's like a lot was, of other bar stories, but I don't know how many you want to hear. Oh, the, the, I, I think the more we learn about Matt, the better, because with the uh, the group with uh, Marcus, Chuck, Dom, and Tom, they um, elaborated on the nicer side of Matt. I think everyone trends towards the crazy side, mm -hmm. but that um, he really had a, a good side to him. He did. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't think a lot of people uh, talk about that. No, he had, he had a very good side to him. He was a, um, again, I think Louie and I were both kind of father figures to him. Mm -hmm. uh, Louie's four years older than I was, but we're both a lot older than Matt. Yeah. And I was the one that found him. So to an extent, he would take our advice and then, they, then he would uh, deviate. He would <laughs> sort of not listen like a little kid would do. Yeah. And uh, as the other podcasts mentioned, drinking didn't help. Yeah. Um, he, you know, up to the time I had left, he was not in any real trouble, um, mainly just bar fights. And, um, you know, one night in one of these clubs, some guy comes up and gets in between me and Matt and starts giving me grief over something. I didn't even know what he's talking about. Yeah. And before I could do anything, Matt just backhanded him with his fist, knocked him out cold. <laughs> Police come and get him. Yeah. Matt throws me his wallet and says, come bail me out, uh, which I did uh, more, th more than once. Yeah. But he didn't start it. And I remember my wife, you know, she was my age and trying to counsel Matt. She said, Matt, why do you get in all these fights? He says, I don't start them. They just yeah. seem to find me. <laughs> then we're walking out of the nightclub and one of the guys at the door starts giving Matt a bunch of grief. And he looks at my wife and goes, see? <laughs> he just, anyway, but no, he, he had a heart of gold. He, uh, he was, who knows? Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde mm -hmm. might be a, a way to put it. Um, one night we're riding home. This is, this is a different thing altogether. But he had this big old rusty, I think it was a Plymouth. And we're riding down these streets that are sort of like Larkham where there's cars parked on both <laughs> sides and he gets a flat tire in the front, pulls over into one of the empty spaces. He gets out and goes to the trunk and I get out and he gets the jack and, and the jack handle out. I said, Matt, you don't have a spare. He goes, I know. He goes walking <laughs> up the street, finds the car with the same tire he had. He jack this is three in the morning, jacks the car up, takes their wheel off goes to his car, puts it on his, goes back to their car and puts his flat tire on their car. <laughs> Honest to God, yeah. truth. Um, he was a character. He, um, from Louis' stories, he seemed, Matt had his own internal justice system that made sense to him, not to many others. Sure. But if he liked you or you're a part of the group in the club, that he was the best guy ever and he would do, and he was a phenomenally strong Oh yeah, person that he had a hard time dealing with. Been so strong. I agreed with that. Yeah. Um, again, I the, in the end, I heard you know it's just sad. It yeah. was his own worst enemy. There's so much potential and, and so much niceness, um, but then the other side that just he couldn't couldn't overcome that apparently. 